Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Earth Guru. Thank you for watching. Lots of changes here on the channel coming soon. Um, not to the content necessarily or the production. Uh, although I would like to work on the production value. Uh, I got a new computer. I'll talk about that in a video later. Been struggling with getting it configured. Again, I'll talk about that in a video later. Uh, most recently, the webcam that I've been using for uh, well two years now is just not working properly with the new computer. But that's not what this video is about. So hey, you know we're like almost a minute into this. We'll get into what the video is about. So recently, I've got I've got some projects in the garage, and. I've been modeling them in Fusion 360. You know, I love the Fusion 360, and I stumbled across a little nuance of Fusion that, you know, I just never knew that I cared about or that I would have to worry about. So uh, I actually created a, a little table for my uh, router uh, stand. It's a router table, but a, a, you know, table on casters for the router. and. Uh, I modeled it and then I, I, I pulled it into the drawing program and I was like, give me a bill of materials, right? And I had all sorts of, I couldn't get a bill of materials. I'll just leave it at that. And I'm going to tell you why. So I'm going to switch over to Fusion. I'm going to show you the first design, um, the first model, I should say, because it's the same design, uh, the first model and uh, talk about uh, what I did and, and why it made sense to me. And then I'm going to switch over to the second model and show you what I did and why it's different, uh, the outcome is better from a, from a bill of materials perspective, but um, not quite so uh, intuitive. But um, all right, so let's just go ahead and let's switch over and we'll cut to it. Okay, my friends, here we are in Fusion. This is the router table with the uh, first design that I did. Uh, look, I like the table. Uh, I was about to say there's not a whole lot of magic here, but you know, I really think that there is. Um, let, let me walk you through the design real quick. So in Fusion, I decided to use components, which is a good idea to do when you want to break your design up into multiple things. I got the drawers here so I can turn the drawers on and off. You can see here, this is essentially the shell, uh, some casters in the bottom or what I'm calling the frame. Turn the frame on, turn the drawers on. Um, you know, pretty straightforward. And then within the drawers, let me turn the frame off here. I'll show you there's the small drawer here, the medium drawer, and the the, whoop, the runners here, the large drawer, and then the runners. Uh, so they're components. I use components because it, it allows you to do cool things like this and design in place and, and whatnot. Um, so I let me, uh, let me switch over to, let me show you the design. This is the drawing file for the first design that I did here. Um, and what you can see here is, uh, I have the, you saw the picture, this is a kind of the outline of it, and then I, I've done some dimensioning here to kind of show me the size, um, but let me let me uh, go over here. Uh, so this shows one of the the drawers, and this is the bill of materials. Uh, bill of materials. <laughs> um, so you can see here that it says back, top, right, left, front, and switch back over to Fusion here, right here. What did I? Where did it go? Oh, I'm sorry. It's this guy right here. Um, so that's the small drawer. Um, I'm going to expand it here. Uh, you can see front, left, right, back, uh, back and bottom. Um, and, uh, you know, front, left, right, bottom, back, whatever. So it's very straightforward. These are the components. This right here are the components. Well, that is very challenging because let me switch back over to design and kind of show you something here. Let me turn off the frame. Um, and very simply, the sides here are all different tall, and the front and back are different height tall. But the bottom here, the bottom of these shells, are identical um, because they're all the same width, they're all the same depth, um, and they're all the same height. Uh, but if I go back into the, the, the bill of materials here, it, says, it literally says it says bottom one. Now, what the hell does that mean, bottom one? Well, it turns out if I, let me blow out medium here, I have bottom two, right? And then I open up uh, large and it says, look, bottom three. So even though these are the same thing, they, from Fusion's perspective in the way that I model it, they are separate things. Um, and so rather than being a board that is whatever the size of the board is times three from a quantity perspective when you're building it, 
it's three separate components in fusion. So that's hugely problematic, which uh, I, I would have never guessed this. So, all right, let's fast forward 24 hours. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I rethought this and let's, let's change the way that we're doing this. So here we go. We have the router table here. And you'll note right off the bat, it looks identical. Why does it look identical? Because it's the same thing. But what you will note here on the side is it is vastly different in terms of the way the components work. Uh, so what did I do with this one? So this is very straightforward. Um, and in some regards, it's easier. In some regards, it's more difficult. But I created a 2x6 by 36 inches tall. Uh, and I called it, I named it 2 by 6 by 36 inch. That is this guy. Um, and then I copied it. I copied it once. I copied it twice. I copied it four times. Um, these are the sides, right? Um, very straightforward. Uh, so the bottom here, the back, the top, the back top, right? So two by four is 30 inches long, right? Sides here, there's side one, side two, side three, side four. Um, two by four by 17, so very straightforward. I, I named them what they are. Now, <clears throat> this is counterintuitive to me because when I'm in here designing, I'm using parametric designing and I make it whatever size fits, right? Um, and so to create a component in advance of a known size is a foreign concept when you're doing parametric design here because you're creating it to the size that fits the model you're building, not uh, a priori or you know in advance of what you're doing. So um, it was very kind of counterintuitive to me. But here is, uh, let me, uh, switch over. I will open the new bill of materials for y'all. So here is the new bill of materials for the new design. What will you notice right off the bat? Um, so the picture on the right is nearly identical, right? It looks just like the other picture, but the parts list is, well, useful. <laughs> um, it tells me that there are four two by sixes by 36s, and they are the legs. It tells me that there are four two by fours by 30s, and they are the base stretchers, right? Um, and more importantly, label says number two here. So number two, it's this guy right here. Now it turns out it's also this guy, that guy, and that guy in the back, but I didn't label that, that's okay, right? The base sides, right? Um, number three here, let's see, where's three? Three right here, it's this guy right here, right? It tells me that there's four of them. It's a two by four by 17. So all I have to do is print this one drawing. This is my cut sheet. Uh, and it gives me what I'm looking for for this project. It is intuitive. It's easy to use. Um, it, it is is production friendly. It is a manufacturer friendly, right? This is what you need from a parts list when you're actually trying to build something. So I gotta tell you, for for years, I build like this, right? I build by what I want to build by the component, um, and I call the components what I want to call them. See, they're drawers. It's a small drawer, right? Um, uh, and then within the small drawer, it's the front, left, side, bottom, right? Uh, this does not lend itself uh, to a cut sheet or a design diagram in Fusion that makes sense. Even though these components are there, um, there's no way to dimension them uh, easily and blow them out in terms of, um, let me show you here. Uh, let's see. Is this guy here? Yeah. So this is, this is the um, exploded view of the shelves, right? Um, and it's important to know, I'll click over here, right? It's important to know that your shelves have this little rabbit here, both on the front and the back. See, I created these diagrams. It was easy to know, front, back, side, front view, detailed view, right? This is important to know uh, when, you're, when you're building something. And so what I found is two dramatically different ways of designing a, a, a thing, uh, what I would call full parametric using the power of design in place that Fusion offers. And then the kind of odd one, which is, uh, it's still, parametric in some regard, but it's build a part, copy the part, move the part around, and align it to where you want it to be. So now here's the problem with this design that I have. So when I want to change the depth of this part, for example, in the previous design, I would go into the parameter that I created, and I'd say instead of 36 inches wide, uh, or 36, uh, this is actually 30 inches wide, 
Um, I want to make it 32. I would go into the parameter and change the 32 and the entire design would update and everything would move. If I were to do this here right now and I were to change the size, let's see. Um, I don't even know what's going to happen. Let's change to 32. Okay, well, there you go. So one, two, three, four, five. Five of the components moved. Obviously didn't change things that mattered. Uh, not fully parametric. Um, and you're probably maybe wondering to yourself, why is that the case? Well, it's very simple because this width, although controlled by a parameter, does not control the position of this leg, this leg and this leg in particular, relative to the width of the part because I moved them using the move command, which was not, uh, the move command was not dependent upon the variable that I created. Um, and quite honestly, I tried, I, I was like, hey, I wanna move it 30 inches to the right in this case, uh, but there's no way to do that with the move command. Um, it didn't seem to accept those parameters. Um, and maybe there's something I'm missing. So, hey, if you know something that I don't know, comment down below, give me some hints. Um, so my point here is there's different ways of modeling in Fusion. And let me undo this guy so I don't uh, end up with that all jacked up. Uh, there's different ways of modeling in Fusion. This way creates a perfect cut list that I can go off and I can, I can build something with. Uh, this way creates a design where I can change parameters. Let's go ahead and see if I've successfully modeled this. Let's change this to 32. Okay, now look at that. Perfectly parameterized model. It looks the same, except it's two inches longer. So hey, yay me, I got it right. But uh, the cut list, there would be no way to know that. Um, so hey, there's gotta be a better way for Fusion where I wanna, uh, I wanna use the parameters and I wanna model like this, but then I'll put a parts list that tells me that I need you know, two boards that are 32 by 20, um, cause there's one here and there's there's one on the bottom there, um, and these runners and these stretchers and the boards and whatever. I should be able to just output some sort of parts list that tells me how big the bodies are. Um, but there doesn't appear to be one, um, at least not within the stock fusion. So uh, that's I'm left wanting there. Um, anyway, I just wanted to throw this out there as, a, as something that I've noticed recently. Okay, so there you have it. I did two designs in Fusion. I did them completely differently. One is fully parametric. It updates itself automatically. Uh, one is not. The one that updates itself automatically basically is, as near as I can tell, incapable of creating a bill of materials that is useful to someone who actually wants to build it. The one that is not parametric is, because of the way that I did the design, um, is capable of creating a bill of materials that is useful to someone who wants to build it. Um, but again, not capable of being um, mutable or, or you know changeable. If I you know you saw the video, I changed it from 30 to 32, and it didn't didn't update properly. So um, I, I don't know how around this uh, to get around this, uh, but but it's something interesting. So um, I did not previously consider or think that there were such dramatic ways, different ways of designing things in Fusion. So I thought I would make this video, not so quick video, but I thought I would make this video to show you all that there's uh, at least two different ways to do things. One it could be useful depending on what the output is and one cannot be so useful. So, hey, I hope you liked this video. Um, it was interesting to me to discover this over the last uh, couple days, weeks or so. And so I hope that you find it useful. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up as always. If you don't like the video, you know what? Give me a thumbs up anyway, just because I deserve it. Uh, what I'm learning with the YouTubes these days, you know, thumbs up, watch time if you made it this far. Thank you, I appreciate that. Watch time is very important. The longer you watch, the better it is for this channel. Uh, the more thumbs up I get, the better it is for this channel. It turns out that subscribing, although important, is not as important. I need a certain number of subscribers if I wanna monetize this channel. Again, as I said before, not so interested in that, but subscribers are important. Ringing the bell is important though, because you ring the bell, you get notified of new content. Um, that's important. But uh, so, hey, give it a thumb up if you like it. If you don't like it, um, you know, screw it. Give it a thumb up anyway, I don't really, care what YouTube thinks about that. All right, I appreciate it, everyone. Thank you so much. 
Appreciate you watching. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I had a video I just posted recently. I hope you got a chance to watch it. If you didn't, it will be posted right up there. Um, trying to remember off the top of my head what it was. Don't know, doesn't matter, you should watch it. There's some really other great videos about Fusion. I will link them down below. I will maybe also put a card up there. It's all good. Thanks everyone, have a great night. We'll see you soon. Um, this guy, this guy right here. thinking okay so here we are this is the this is the hmm.